My name is Kurt Smicker. I have been with Greenmark Equipment for six years now as a field tech. My name is Rodney T. Been a technician at Greenmark for 19 years. We are going to go over walker combines, some adjustments and maintenance points on these machines. We are going to start here on the variable drive system on this combine on the left hand side of the feeder house. Uh, what we're going to go over here is some adjustments on these lower shivs, uh, what kind of gaps we're wanting to look at and how to adjust this belt. Uh, starting this off, what we're looking for is an eighth inch gap between these two shivs. Uh, the reason we want that is to have the appropriate back shaft speed for our platforms and corn heads. How we are going to achieve that gap between the shivs is we're going to have to adjust this top shiv assembly. Uh, how we're going to do that is by taking a lot of these bolts apart on the housing. Um, now, when I say take them loose, don't take them drastically loose, just a light looseness enable to this to move freely. What we are going to do is if we are tight down here, we're going to move this shiv assembly backwards to allow this belt to wedge in between the shivs. Now, as we adjust this, we want to rotate this belt by hand to allow this belt to seat down inside these shivs. Now, once we get our gap achieved here on the lower shivs, we want to tighten this housing up, up on the top end. Now, when we do that, we need to keep in mind that the upper feeder house drive belt is going to have to be adjusted as well. As we move this assembly backwards, that's going to allow that belt assembly to detension. Um, with that, uh, this gear or this oil in the gear case, we want to change yearly. It's a uh, 8090. Uh, on some of these older machines or synthetic oil. Uh, again, I want to stress that that's a yearly change just due to the fact of how much torque and movement is going on in this gear case. Moving on from there, we're going to talk about this conveyor chain assembly up front here. Uh, as you can see, we have some bent slats and things of that nature on this assembly. In my experience, the easiest way to work through this conveyor chain and checking them all is by taking the right hand side drive chain off to allow more freedom here to move this chain freely. Uh, with that, you know, adjusting these, these slats, getting them bent back in place and or replacing them completely is done much easier with that chain off. Now, as far as our adjustment here, we've got a eye bolt on the left hand side here, as well as the right hand side. Now, when we are adjusting this chain, we want to ensure we're doing both sides relatively at the same time. Otherwise, the tension and assembly inside of the throat is going to get uh, off pitch and cause tension or tightness on one side and looseness on the other. So how we are going to do that is by taking some of these bolts loose here. Again, much like the variable shiv assembly, we do not want to take them completely out, just loose. Uh, and again, if we want to tension it, we're going to adjust this bolt uh, up, allowing that eye bolt to pull that assembly rearward or forward. Uh, when we're doing that, there's a window up top here that we want to be looking inside. Adjusting this conveyor chain, what we're looking for, here's your window. And it has a brief description here. This chain, we want to just to be coming off of this platform here, right at this midpoint is what we're looking for. Right straight down from this, this bolt hole here down into the chain is where you want to look for that adjustment. At this point, we are going to talk a little bit about the concave and the threshing area and the rasp bars. Um, what we're looking for on the threshing area is condition of a couple things. Um, we'll start off here with the rasp bars. Your rasp bars, new spec on a rasp bar is 3 eighths of an inch deep in between, your, in between them. The wear spec is a quarter of an inch. Uh, once they hit that quarter of an inch, Will they work? Yes. Um, but once you get to below that, it'll start affecting your threshing and how much you're going to have to pinch it down to get the, get the crop off of the cob or out of the pods. Um, and then in return, you're probably going to start to see some grain damage, beans cracking, that's, and things like that. So um, start out the year, like I say, make sure these are good shape. Um, not worn, not bent from rocks or anything going through it. What we want to look for here is the damage as far as rocks going through it. Um, this hole where this bar is broke out right here is from a rock going through. Um, what will happen eventually is with that being broke and cracked, it'll be loose 
It's going to wear on your nails, which in return is going to fall through eventually. And once it does that, you're going to leave a hole there. So your material is going to fall through, which you're going to have a harder time getting a cleaner sample coming into the tank and out and not leaving a bunch of stuff. So it just takes away some of the threshing once that falls through, once that breaks out. So on the concave, also what we're going to look for is when you're looking up into the front of the machine, you're also going to want to look for how level the concave is or make sure it ain't got a, a bent or warp just a little bit. What you'll look at when you're looking up from the feeder house, you'll look across here and make sure your concave doesn't have a, a dip in it where it's worn in the center so it's sagging. Um, the, the other thing important with that is if it's not sagged is to make sure roll your rasp bars around and kind of check your clearance and make sure your concave is level from side to side. From, and then from side, if you need to adjust that concave at the time, then you can go, I'll show you some adjustments and places to adjust it from each side of the machine and some inspection doors. While we're looking here at the concave, um, right behind the concave, one thing we're gonna wanna take a look at too is your beater grate. What we're looking for on the beater grate is making sure you don't got any bars broken out. Most of the time, from what I've seen, they'll break out usually on the sides, which you'll see these bars here. Or here you'll have holes where one or two of these are missing. And the other thing to look for is back here where the bolts go through is make sure that the bolts and the spacers are there. I've seen where those bolts will break and fall out and then this will be just kind of hanging back here. And at some point, Two, they'll end up ripping up the side of the machine or breaking out the side of the machine where you're gonna have to do some patching. What we're looking for here is seeing how this one here is got a big dent in it. Um, a lot of the times, once they get to this point, you really wanna look down here on the bottom side or on the top side with that big of a dent in it, there's a good chance that it could be cracked and you don't want that rasp bar to break. Now we are at the cleaning fan section of this uh, presentation. What we want to draw our eyes to are the veins that are here on the fan itself. We want to ensure that all the veins are in place or in good condition as well. Uh, why that is important because the balance of the fan, if we get this in balance of the fan, it can cause it to, to rotate on the shaft, causing insufficient uh, airflow throughout the housing. With that, we want to ensure that the fan to the shaft itself or in good condition, we don't have wear points on there as well to where it's allowing that to shake and move, hitting the housing itself. With that, we've got this speed sensor that's right here. We want to ensure that we have the appropriate gapping between the washer or the tone wheel and the sensor itself, allowing us to have that accurate reading of the fan so we can adjust it appropriately. With that, we have these bearings on both sides for the shaft. As you can imagine, when one of these bearings start to go out, it's gonna allow that shaft to sit to one side, causing these veins to hit the housing, and again, causing damage within the machine, uh, some breakdowns and shutdowns at that time. With that, uh, we are going to go to the other sides for some other parts and components for this fan uh, system. Now we're on the left-hand side of this combine. What we're looking at here is the upper variable shivs for the fan drive. What I want to point out here quickly is that the outer shiv of this fan drive assembly is a molded piece. There is no bushing on the interior of this shiv to the shaft. Why that's uh, important information is because that outer shiv, as it wears, you're not going to have the capability of just replacing the bushing. Once that starts to wear and oscillate on that shaft, it's going to cause a lot of damage to the shaft and belt itself, not allowing the fan to, uh, to drive appropriately. We are moving to the pitman arm bearings now, as you can see here. This is the drive system for the cleaning shoe itself. What we want to be looking for here is the bearing conditions on this outer cam and the inner cam itself. What I tend to do is take a pry bar and go in between the two cams and ensure the cams aren't walking on the shaft itself. I have seen that frequently uh, throughout my years. And with that, we want to check these bearings as well ensure the bearings aren't walking on the cam uh, as well. With that, uh, typically whenever I'm changing uh, pitman arm bearings, I'm going to re be replacing the flanges, the bearings, as well as the rear bearing. You're already at that point with these cans and bearings off. It's just one more step to go into the interior bearing. Uh, again, 
both sides have two pitman arm bearings and cams, as well as the inner bearing. Uh, when we have these components apart, we do need to take into consideration the wear on the shaft. If there's any kind of wear on the shaft itself, it allows that cam to walk around, causing the chaffer and sieve to move around uh, incorrectly. Now we're gonna take a little look at the drive systems for the threshing. Um, big major thing here is your dual range. Um, most machines have this. Some of them, you'll have just a single range where you won't have this gearbox. You'll just have the belt and a big pulley. Um, ones with the dual range like this one has. What we wanna look for on this is make sure there's no oil leaking underneath or oil leaking here. Um, maintenance on this is what, what we wanna look for is right here it says oil up and what we'll do is to check the oil on this is you'll roll it around and this will be up here there's an arrow and have the arrow facing up and then there is a pipe plug right here that you would take out which will be about right here when that arrow is up and when that arrow is up you should have oil just coming out of that plug if you're going to drain this and drain this and check it what i what you would do is take this plug out, roll it around down to the bottom, drain your oil. And once your oil is drained, to fill this gear case, you would roll it up and have this hole at the top and you would fill it up. The capacity on that is two quarts of 8090. I would recommend doing that yearly or at least every other year. If anything, it's cheap insurance to make sure you don't see no metal coming out in your oil. Um, or if it's never been done, these are extremely expensive to get into. And also on the dual range here, we also want to look at, there's a pin here, you'll notice. Um, what this pin does is, uh, is for your high and low speed. Most of the time your corn and beans are going to be in low speed. And if you're doing wheat or other crops, you'd move it into the high speed, which is where it's at right now. And if you were going to put it in low speed, you would use this loop bring it around here and there's an arm you'd pull it down and the pin would go through it and hook it together and that would be your low range. While we're right here we also want to take a good look at our belt, qu belt quality. Um, you'll see this one's got some cracks in it. Um, you want to just make sure you don't got any cracks, breaks, anything that's going to cause that belt to fail during operation. While we're looking at belts we'll also look at this upper drive one and for the same thing we'll just look for cracks in between here or if it's got some gouges out of it or chunks missing out of it. So moving on to our variables here, which is drives your dual range. What we're looking for here is just mostly your belt quality. Um, then the other thing is down inside here, you would want when this is slowed all the way down, that shiv will be open. This one will be all the way closed. And when this is all the way closed, you'll want to have a gap of a quarter inch. To achieve that quarter inch gap, you're going to loosen some bol this bolt up and then come down here and uh, break your jam nuts loose on this adjusting rod and you'll be able to move this one way or the other to help achieve your quarter inch down inside these pulleys. While we're on the side of the machine here, we're also going to look real quick um, on when we were talking earlier about adjusting your concave and checking the concave clearance, what you'll use to adjust those and how you can see those is these little inspection holes right here on the side of the machine. You got one here and one down low here and you also got two on the other side and that's where you're gonna go in and measure your 3 16 of an inch between the rasp bar and the concave. 